If you have used Creo or Pro-E and now have to learn SOLIDWORKS for school or for a job, here are a few tips to help get you started. Feature-based parametric modeling in SOLIDWORKS is very similar to Creo and Pro-E. You first need to create a sketch on a plane and then you can create a feature. Both the sketch and the feature are driven by dimensions and other parameters. The only difference is in the user interface. If you have used any Windows application such as Microsoft Office, all the basic functions like copy and paste, pressing the control key to select multiple things, and right clicking to bring up more options are found in SOLIDWORKS as it is written on a Windows platform. This is the basic SOLIDWORKS interface for a part document. On the left is the feature manager which shows all the sketches and features that have been created as well as lets you edit them. This is equivalent to the model tree that is found in Creo and Pro-E. On the top of the screen, there is a command manager which displays the common actions used. There are different tabs for all the sketch tools and features. This is similar to that of the ribbon user interface found in Creo. The heads up view toolbar can be found in the upper center of the screen. These icons allow you to change which side you are looking at, as well as how you are viewing the model on the screen. In SOLIDWORKS, there are tutorials that can be found by going under Help and SOLIDWORKS Tutorials. The Getting Started tutorials are a good place to get familiar with the basics of SOLIDWORKS. The help files located under Help are a great resource when figuring out how certain features or actions work. You can also access these from the search bar located in the upper right of the window. There are a variety of resources that can be found by clicking the house icon on the right of the screen. To create a new part, go under File and New. You can select New Part, Assembly, or Drawing Document. This is the same way as in Creo, but you do not need to specify whether it is a solid or sheet metal, as well as its name at this time. To set your units, go under Tools, then Options. Select the tab called Document Properties, and then select Units. Here you can set the units as well as your precision. To set the drafting standard, select Drafting Standard at the top of the list. To start a new sketch, click one of the planes from the feature tree and either select the far left icon that appears above the cursor or click the sketch tab and select the big sketch icon in the upper left of the command manager. With a new sketch created, entities such as lines can be drawn. The tool in use can be disengaged by pressing the escape key. The escape key also works with most commands to exit out of that command. The sketch tools found in SOLIDWORKS are very similar to those within Creo and Pro-E. Relations can be added to a sketch entity simply by clicking on it. The property manager will appear on the left side of the screen and the available relations will be shown. Multiple entities can be selected by using the control key and then selecting the relation within the property manager. Using the smart dimension tool, you can add dimensions to the sketch entities created. In Creo and Pro-E, dimensions were automatically added once you stop sketching. If you like having the entire model dimensioned and then modifying them, SOLIDWORKS has two features that can help you do that. The first is Numeric Sketch Input. To enable this, right-click inside a sketch and select the Numeric Sketch Input icon. When you start sketching, dimensions will appear for the sketch entities and the values can be entered directly. For entities such as rectangles, click Tab to set the next value. This feature allows you to add dimensions as you sketch and then you can use the fully defined sketch feature to lock in all of the dimensions. Fully defined sketch is found under Tools, Dimensions, and then Fully defined sketch. This allows you to pick the entities to reference for your dimensioning as well as any relations that can be applied. It will then apply all the needed dimensions and relations to fully define the sketch. With a sketch created, the sketch can be closed by clicking the close icon in the upper right of the window or by clicking the sketch icon again in the command manager. By clicking the feature tab in the command manager, the list of available features will be shown. In Creo, the extrude feature allows you to add or remove material from a model. However, in SOLIDWORKS there are two commands, extruded boss which allows you to add material, and extruded cut which will remove material. This same principle is applied to other features as well. When creating a feature such as an extrude, all the options for the extrude are seen in the feature manager. This is very similar to Creo, however there is no need to go under the different tabs to select options. The direction of extrusion can be changed by clicking this arrow similar to that in Creo 
and the type of extrusion, whether it is a blind extrude or up to next, can be chosen by selecting from this drop down. For other features like sweeps and lofts, it is necessary to create multiple paths and profiles first before selecting the loft or sweep feature. This is unlike in Creo, where you can create the sketch after you've selected the feature. You can go back and edit either the sketch or the feature by right clicking it in the Feature Manager and selecting Edit Feature or Edit Sketch. I hope this video helped to make the transition between Creo and SolidWorks easier.